Welcome back to A Plus Parents, everyone. And with me today, I have an educated entrepreneur, speaker, author, and mother, but not just a mother, mother of eight children. Eight, eight, count them up, all eight. Yeah, you need two hands. I know that's how it goes, right? So I want to introduce you today to Jennifer Smith. And uh, Jennifer also runs a program called, um, I, yeah, I had it right here. There it is, Exceed in Learning. I was I had excellence in learning, but I was like, it's not excellence. It's Exceed in Learning. So we're going to put all the show notes uh, for you in the in, on the site so you can go back and you can click and find ways to reach her as well. But, you know, you hear about people when we talk about there's that connection between math and music, right? So here's someone with a bachelor's degree in music and a master's degree in elementary math. So that math and music connection really goes. But what Jennifer loves to do is help young people to read. So this is like super well balanced and everything that she does. So I'm going to have her share with us about what Exceed and Learning is and how it works and how you can get involved with it as well. But if you think about, um, you know, what it's like. So Jennifer came from uh, working in the private sector as a public as a private school teacher uh, so that she she worked. Uh, she's got teaching experience. She's got classroom experience. She's homeschooled her kids. So she's done a little bit of everything, which actually, for me, I love hearing that because it gives you the opportunity to kind of see what's working and we can take what's working and apply it in a homeschool world, what's not working in the public or private school classrooms and not apply that in your homeschool world. And you kind of get to kind of get the best the best of all practices there. So you know, we go from there. She started her company um, back in 2020. So it was uh, often times when people were uh, not going to the classroom and they needed to find resources. And Jennifer took advantage of that and put together a really cool program. So um, let's just get started. So first of all, Jennifer, anything else you want to say about yourself? And welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm not sure what else to say about me. I think you covered a lot of it. Okay, um, good. Yeah. <laughs> I think one thing that, that I do like to to say is, you know, I believe in public education, and I think a lot of homeschooling parents would agree that not everybody should be a homeschooling parent. <laughs> right. But I think homeschooling is such an awesome option for those who do want to pursue it. So I just think it's it's you know an excellent avenue for anyone wishing to do that. Right. Absolutely. It, homeschooling is, it really does. It takes something, you know, it was, it, it was funny when, uh, when the pandemic happened, because it's funny, you started your, started your company then when mm -hmm. the pandemic happened, I had so many people contact me and it was people that were not necessarily homeschoolers, but other business professionals, you know, and they'd contact me and go, man, you must be just all over this, you know, this pandemic and what's going on. And I said, I, I want nothing to do with it and because I'm not looking for people that are displaced from school that need something to do until school opens again. I, that's I'm looking for homeschool families. So yes, if somebody comes to us and they're interested in becoming a homeschool family, absolutely. I want to talk to them. We want to see how we can support them. But just for people that were like, you know, trying to just capitalize on, on a tragedy, really, with the, what, what happened with the pandemic, I just, it wasn't, wasn't my thing. It wasn't where I wanted to go. Um, you did something great. You, you know, when you started having children, <laughs> there's eight of them. So you've got yes. a lot of, you know, got to, got to practice and you're a seasoned veteran in, in uh, parenting. Um, but when you started having children, you decided then that was your time when you started your homeschooling experience and you start you started at the very beginning with them. So you really know, like, what is it like for somebody that's just getting started, just starting out? So, you know, let's start there. Right. For parents that are just starting, they're just getting started. Where, where should they start? What do you think? Well, um, you know, obviously they need to find out what their state requires and, and all of the logistics behind that. Um, but I like to talk about the curriculum aspect because I was intrigued by it all. I, I love the whole idea of all the curriculums out there and, you know, all the lessons and how do we make this fun and how do we, you know, cover all of the, the things that we need to cover. And um, it can be very overwhelming. And, you know, going to homeschool conferences, there's so much, there's mm -hmm. so many, you know, uh, workshops to go to. There's so many speakers to listen to. There's so many things in the exhibit hall to look at that it's extremely overwhelming. And I think um, that a lot of parents just don't know what to do or where to start. Or And you want to do what's best for your kids. So you want to start off right. And it just is a lot. So I tell parents to just, um, first of all, if you know the basics, if you know what they need to know, start there. So when I tell um, parents starting with their youngsters, their kindergartners, preschool, kindergarten, first grade, 
I say, just make a list of what you think they need and then check with your state standards. Um, state sta I don't know if all homeschool parents are aware of all the state standards, but every single state has a standard that that child is supposed to have learned in that grade level. It's a great guideline. You know, that's what the public school teachers are following. At least it gives you an idea of where um, that that developmental age is at, because that's where they they're um, where those standards came from. Right. And from there, you know, I want to teach reading, writing, math, spelling, science, whatever. Um, what do they need to know as a kindergartner? What do they need to know as a first grader? And a lot of these things, many curriculums out there cover it. You know, it, it, it's just a preference, a personal preference. Mm -hmm. um, I'm here to help guide parents to make sure that their kids are on track, to make sure that they are covering the things that they need to know so that they aren't behind. And we know homeschooling, you know, many parents go from kindergarten through high school and into college, but some don't. And if they are going to end up back in school at some point, whether it's planned or unplanned, you don't want your child going to public school being behind, you know? So where that would be my, my suggestion is to, to know what it is that they should know or where a, a good developmental age is and start there. But also I have a story I tell about my nine-year-old or, okay, he wasn't nine at the time. Let me, let me rephrase. He's 22 now. <laughs> <laughs> at the time he was nine, um, going into third grade and he couldn't read. Okay. He could not read. I mean, three letter words struggling. And as a teacher, I knew not every child will develop at the same place, but by third grade, I knew this was going to be a problem if we didn't start figuring out what he needed. So I went through three different curriculums. I tried them all. The first one I tried worked with my older two children or my older one and my third. I'm sorry. He's the second. So the first and third, they both learned with this first curriculum. My second child did not. His name's Joey, by the way. Joey did mm -hmm. not learn. My second one, second curriculum, went through every part of it. He still was not reading. Third curriculum, he took off and he was reading. And by the time he turned 10, he was reading The Hobbit. But wow. I tell that story because it's, you know, it's scary if your child's not developing. And are they going to learn? Do they have a learning disability? Do they need help in areas? Um, some do, some don't. You know, every kid's different. In Finland, they don't teach kids to, to do any academics until they're at least seven years old. Hmm. That is not the case here. <laughs> right, yeah. It's so true, true. I just think taking um, taking that approach of of first making a list of what they what you want them to know, what they think they should know, and then just finding what fits for your family and knowing it, it might not all fit, you know, what worked for my first didn't work for my second. Right. That, that we see that all the time, you know, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, and it's funny. And it's it, what, that's one of the things that I love about homeschooling that I, I came from the public school world, you know, uh, I say a hundred years ago, but it was about 35 <laughs> years ago, right. When I first yes. started and you know, it was the same thing. It was like, you know, I had a class of 30, 35 kids. Um, and then it got upwards of 40, 45 kids for a while. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and I knew everybody was learning differently. And, you know, some kids, they were having, you know, and I say kids, I was teaching high school. So, you know, I'm looking at these high school guys, and some of them just sitting still was not going to be the way we were going to get things done. And, you know, and then others were just totally content with just, no, I just want to just do my thing and go. So, you know, it's interesting to see that. But in the homeschool world, what do you get to do? Well, you get to adapt and modify and actually individualize and make it personalized for each each child that we have and it's just I love that so okay now because you're a reading person and I can ask you this question so I'm a musician I'm a math guy uh you went beyond that and you love to teach reading I do not enjoy reading I, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna that's my I'm gonna tell one on myself it is not something I like to do and, you know, it's, and I, you know, and I know that, um, you know, and the really great thing, homeschoolers are just on the most part, just avid readers. They're great readers, right? 
So, you know, when you look for a long way, like something for me didn't click, right? Because I just never found that joy in reading. So what are some important, important things that parents should be doing with their young children? Uh, obviously, it didn't happen with me, or I don't, I don't know if it did. It just didn't click, whatever it was. But how do you ensure that they become good readers? What do you share with parents about that to get young people going? Right. Um, and and having eight children, you know, everyone's different. So I I started, I, I had book cases everywhere. My kids will tell you, we had books in every single room. So there was always a book. Um, and library trips were always fun, you know, picking out the, well, and then they would come home with the Garfield books and the other ones too, and that's okay. So I tell parents, first of all, let kids enjoy books. Not everything should be a reading lesson because if it's a reading lesson, they're not going to enjoy it. I say if they pick up a book that is at a high school level and they're six years old, let them look at the pictures. Let them tell their own stories. If they pick up a book that's a baby board book, so what? You know, let them enjoy literature. Let them enjoy books. That's a big part of it. Don't make everything a lesson. And then just have books available and do the read alouds. Read aloud to your children. I used to read aloud to my kids every every night at bedtime they get to pick out books and we would read um there was a point where some of my older ones you know they're middle school high school they don't they're, they're like I you know don't need that mom but what I did is I sat in the hallway and held all the bedroom doors open and so they still listened and they still enjoyed it but they didn't have to you know oh that's great they were the, the <laughs> stuff. you know what I actually could see that happening too it's kind of like there's mm -hmm. like it's not cool to do it, but I really want to. So exactly. perfect, right? Oh, that's really mm -hmm. good. Oh, I like it's, that. Yeah. And listening to audiobooks can can be that way too for them. You know, that can still right. be an enjoyable way to experience books. Right. Um, but but just so you know, I mean, I have pictures and pictures of my kids reading books all over the house all the time. Two things. One, they went to bed and I have they shared rooms because you know, eight kids. Um, my, my daughters will tell on each other, my sons, um, uh, so-and-so's reading under his covers with his alarm clock. That was the light they used. <laughs> <laughs> right. But really, do you, is that bad? You know, think about right. that. They're, they're reading. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is just so people feel, feel better about this. Um, my daughter, I'm going to tell on her, <laughs> she's in college now to be a teacher, um, does not like to read at all. Mm, and gotcha, okay. <laughs> I have pictures of her reading books and she was a great reader, you know, right. an excellent reader was reading re very young, uh, but doesn't enjoy it, right. you know, so yeah. to each their own. That, okay. That's good. Yeah. And I'm like, I can read and I, yes. <laughs> you know, but it's like, that, I have to say there's probably certain times, um, once in a while I'll pick up something. I'm like, Oh, this is interesting. And I'll read it. But for the most part, I'm like, mm, gosh, if there's just a movie about this, that'd be really cool. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> good there. Oh, that's funny. All right. So let's let's look because you've you've dealt with, you know, three of three of your kids have dealt with some special needs. Mm -hmm. Um, and they've been on the spectrum and you've kind of and you and they and you've discovered that at different times and points in their lives. So for parents that uh, they have young people with special needs at home, they've got a disability, special needs, it could be medical, it could be uh, it could be a mental or academic. What resources are available? To homeschooling parents, because all homeschooling mm -hmm. parents are always looking for well, what additional resources are available, especially when they've got somebody that uh, that has some extra extra needs that they need to attend to. Yeah, so um, I think it's important to know that even though we are homeschoolers, that there is public services available. Um, my our home school district that my children lived in provided um, resources for homeschool parents, and they gave us funding for buying curriculum and things. That was that came from the school district, hmm. which also came from state funding. Let me be clear. It wasn't just the district handing out money, right. but it, it is available. Um, but along with that, they um, when my son, I, I've told this story before, but my son, Joey, did not learn to read like my other children and he struggled and by the time he was nine he still was not reading and you know I tell people just don't panic <laughs> let's be calm about it let's just take an approach um 
an approach to, you know, an, an explicit instruction and, and working through what the steps, but don't panic because everybody learns at their own pace. But for Joey, being a teacher myself, you know, a state educated teacher, having worked in, in private and public schools, um, I knew that that's an age where it's he's really going to start struggling. If, if people don't know, there's um, kind of a philosophy of kindergarten through second grade, kids learn to read. Third grade up, they read to learn. Hmm. So they kind of have to know how to read by third grade. And then they're reading for content. They're reading those history books and those science books and things. Um, that's kind of the general rule of thumb. But Joey, you know, wasn't doing that. And so I did get him tested at the local public school. Uh, he also had some other things like fine motor. Um, we had him going to a physical therapy for large motor, di different things. Um, but they offered, this is all free. It's all public. Um, they picked him up at our house every day by bus, took him to school for one hour and returned him. And he didn't go into the classroom. He went to the, the specialists. He had uh, um, occupational therapy mm -hmm. and reading with a teacher. Now, I was a teacher, but I don't know if everybody understands that being a mom and being a teacher are two different things. Um, of course. <laughs> you know, I tell people I, I played the piano for, I taught piano lessons for 25 years. I never taught my own children because mm. they, <laughs> they did not necessarily want to learn from me. So I went and got another piano teacher <laughs> for them. But but these things are available. Um, maybe you don't want your kid going to school for an hour a day. That's okay. But just they they can offer resources to you also, and you are allowed to to use whatever you can find, you know. Oh, that's great! Yeah, mm -hmm. I, th I think just you know looking out, looking around, and finding resources, talking to other people, just you know, it's like it, it takes that yeah. conversation to happen. Okay, so let's let's look and see because you know sometimes um, you know spelling shows up, right? You're you're learning mm -hmm. to read and you're reading, um, and then uh, but you've got you know, but but spelling is it is an issue, and it's it, you know it's always interesting. I kind of look and see about my own spelling. It's like, hmm, did I spell that right? So I always try to stick to words that I know because I know how to spell those right. Fortunately, you know, there's spell check now, and uh, you know, mm -hmm. right, and those kinds of things. But oftentimes, do you, you know? I know uh, that sometimes parents can back away from the things that they don't feel like they're good at. You know, so uh, a lot of times now when you get up to you know. The higher level algebras and trigonometry and the upper level geometry, right? I get it. That may not that may be something they did, but not something they want to learn again. But if you look at something like spelling, where they, you know, you get to be an adult and spelling is not something that you're super comfortable with, and you you feel like, hmm, yeah, I'm not the best speller. I, we, I think, as as parents, uh, as as people, you know, we tend to shy away from the things that we don't feel like we're good at, right? So. Mm -hmm. You know, for let's say that you you have a parent and they're not great at spelling, but yet they want their they want their child to be great at spelling. Um, what do they need to know about for themselves about how they can help students become better spellers? Maybe when they're not a better speller themselves, or maybe they're a great speller. And how do you get young people to be better spellers? Right. Um, I laughed because my husband does that with words. If he doesn't know how to spell a word, he changes it to another word. That's right. We, we use the smaller <laughs> version. That's right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and another, you know, my son, Joey, when he did, I, I, just for your listeners to know that I homeschooled for eight years. So there was a time when my kids did go to school. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a, a, a choice for our family that we we chose to do that. Um, but Joey, he couldn't spell even well enough for a spell check to pick it up. And so that was our goal. Let's get him close enough for spell check because that's right. going to cure it all, right? Spell check will just find the words and fix it for you. Um, but I, I know a lot of parents, spelling is, is one of those areas where it can fall by the wayside. The thing about spelling is that 98% of the English words are phonetic you can read them and you can spell them. And a lot of people will say, oh, that word doesn't follow the rules, but it does follow the rules. That's the thing mm. is that people just don't know the rules. Like silent E at the end of a word. It doesn't just make a vowel say its name. There's seven silent E rules. And a lot of parents don't know that. Wow. Every single syllable has to have a 
a vowel in it, it has to have one vowel sound. It can have more than one vowel, but it can only have one vowel sound. So there's a silent E at the end of the word because it has to have a vowel. And it, you know, there's just a lot of, a lot of rules that they need to know. And so my suggestion is don't just pick up a spelling curriculum that has a random list of words. That's not going to help your child learn to spell. They're just going to memorize words. If they're great at memorizing, if they have a visual memory where they can memorize thousands and thousands of words, I guess it'll work, <laughs> but they won't know why. They won't know any reasons and they won't transfer it to other words with those same spelling patterns. Um, instead, teach what they're re learning to read. So if they are learning uh, CVC words at the beginning of learning to read, you know, cat, dog, hit, bat, um, teach them that we use the short vowel sound unless there's a rule and you haven't learned any rules. So you have to have the short vowel sound. You know, there's, it, once they learn the rules as they go along, the, they'll really become good spellers. I promise. I've seen it. That's awesome. Oh, that's really great. Right. And it's like, you know, and work on what you're working on, right? As exactly. To, yeah, yeah, you bring in a list of words that you you don't know what they mean. You just know that you're mm -hmm. going to have to spell them or you define them, but you're not going to remember that anyway. So that's really great. That's yes. great. All right. Well, that's very cool. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, there's your website. It's exceedinlearning.com, which is mm -hmm. uh, all, all written out as one word, exceedinlearning.com. And then they can find you uh, Instagram that way and Facebook that way. You have things on Amazon that way as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure people can find all of the links through the website. Um, but tell me a little bit about, you know, where a parent wants to come and maybe they, you know, they do want to do some outsourcing and they do want to have you come in or one of your staff members come in and do some work with, uh, with, with their children on some things that they just need some extra help on. Tell us a little bit about what is Exceed in Learning and, you know, what, what do parents, what should parents expect if they want to check out what you're doing? Sure. Yeah. Um, so first of all, on our website, right at the top, you'll see a, a button, a link for a free assessment. So you can just try us out for free. I mean, that's, that's the best way to get to know what we do. Um, we offer, when being my, myself starting the business, I am a K through six teacher. I am certified in the elementary age and that's, you know, what I excel at. So um, a lot of our services are for those age, that age group. Uh, we do offer uh, math classes. We have a teacher certified four through eight. We have a high school or a five through 12, 12th grade English teacher. Mm -hmm. um, and she can focus specifically on book studies and vocabulary and comprehension and a lot of the writing that goes along with it. Things that I don't do. <laughs> That's why I have her. Right. Um, but yeah, you just sign up for a free assessment. And then we meet one-on-one -on -one over Zoom with the parent, with the child. We do the assessment. We talk through things. We explain things. And then you get a full written email, you know, that that explains all the strengths and what, what I think maybe perhaps your child might need help with, where we could go from here, what we can do. Um, we work with a lot of homeschoolers uh, very individually. We work with the parents. So some parents want us to do a specific program. We do that program. I've purchased curriculum that they're using to work with their child. Um, they want us just to do our thing where we make sure that they're maintaining their skills and are ready for the next grade level. We do that. Um, you know, we work with kids from one day a week to five days a week. It depends on what, what the parents are looking for. So we really run the gamut. Um, they can always just send an email to the, the, there's a contact page, but to me, Jennifer at exceedinlearning.com. And I'd answer any questions that they had. That's great. Okay. Well, that's awesome. So exceedinlearning.com. And also they can find uh, find you on social media as well for people that want to find out more. And that's great. There's a free assessment. It doesn't hurt to find out. Just kind of no. check in and see how things are going. So that's awesome. Yep. Well, very good. Well, Jennifer, at first of all, thanks for, uh, thanks for making time in your day to be able to be here and to do this. And uh um, I know our listeners are going to be grateful to hear some of the things that you've shared with them uh, and be able to find out more about what you do, which is awesome as well. And if you're up for it, we'll come back and do this again, maybe later in the year and come back and see how things are going and how else we can go out and support our homeschool families. Yeah, sure. Anytime. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for tuning in to A Plus Parents and we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.